game. Game. That's 2011. The only Directed correction by... is I actually did Kehli Hamji Jan say after what's your Rashi? That ah, Rashi made. well, fair enough. But you would still trust him. Research, my uncle, research. <laughs> and this is this is by Abhinav, uh, Abhinav Deo, right? Uh, who thereafter made Delhi Belly. He actually so it's made not Delhi even Belly past before. film, but it's even the film after. Yeah, he actually made it before. Explain he this He had shot me. it before, yeah. Do you think you've been done in by directors? Or do you trust direct or have you trusted directors far too much given their past record? No, it's got nothing to do with I've never judged them on their past record. Mm. It's it's just I'm a complete director's actor. Okay. Um if I have a disagreement about how a director is seeing a particular scene, my approach is let me try and convince them. Mm. If they're not convinced, then I have to wholeheartedly submit to what their vision is, whether I agree in it or not. Mm. Um Yeah, but... Uh, Don't they all? Is that what he's saying? You know, sometimes it's it's hard to understand why, you know, stuff... I mean, when I see a movie like Delhi 6, Rakesh mm. was meant to make my first film, actually. We, right. We wrote a film together called Samjhota Express mm. when we both were looking for a job and both frustrated that we weren't getting one. Um, I've known him since then. And um, I thought Delhi 6 was a wonderful film. Um... Yeah, but I, I, I mean, don't that know. of course is subjective, good and bad. I'm, I mean, more in terms of because there is no way to to quantify these things. Yeah. I'm presuming box office success is what we can go by. No, absolutely, and that's the only thing you right. should go by. Right. Right. I mean, we're, we we right. work in in cinema. It's right. a commercial art. Exactly. So let's be very honest. The right. only barometer is box mm. office. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's sad. But why do you think Delhi Six did not reach the same level of audience reception as Rangdi Basanti did? I think today, if I look back. There was no hero in Delhi 6. Hmm. I think in storytelling, it's very important to have a hero, a protagonist and an antagonist. Hmm. There were, I think, too many protagonists, so we didn't know who to get behind. Hmm. Um, I mean, like we were discussing Bunty or Bubbly. Right. There's this beautiful scene in Bunty or Bubbly where they're sitting by a brook and suddenly Bubbly starts crying and Bunty asks her, why are you crying? And she turns around and very innocently says that I'm missing my home. And mm. they go and actually they call their parents. And mm. she calls and speaks to her parents and says, mm. I'm okay. And then she turns to him and says, now your turn. And mm. he says, no, nobody is missing me or thinking of me at home. And you cut to a shot of, of Bunty's very critical father, um, which was played by Mr. Raj Babar, sitting under a contraption that Bunty had invented a shower and missing his son. At that point in time, what happens is suddenly your heart goes out to them and you're like, Oh, I want these kids to do well. Right. You know, you know, I'm, I'm get behind them. Right. You emotionally you invest them. in them. Right. You root for them. I feel maybe in Delhi Six there were too many people to root for. So who do you root for? Mm. Um, I think that could have gone wrong with Delhi Six. What about game? Like Boman Irani as Thai Prime Minister. Yeah. <laughs> what are you saying? Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Why they have a lot of Indian expats in? What went wrong with game? Hmm. I'm just remembering the film. I guess that's what went wrong. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, game went through a lot of casting changes also. And um, I think we started laying too much emphasis. It was essentially a revenge story. Mm. It was the revenge of my character that he was taking for the murder of the love of his life, which mm. was played by Sarah. From that, it became a murder mystery to then, I think we just kind of lost the focus of the film. Mm. Had it remained just the story of a lover taking revenge for the murder of his beloved, I think it would have had a lot more focus. Somewhere, I think we kind of diluted the focus. Then there was the character of the you know, the Interpol agent played by Kangana, then the other characters and how they linked up. So I think somewhere we kind of compromised the soul of the film. Right. No, the reason why I'm asking these questions, Abhishek, is because there's something that you said which, you know, which was part of your self-introspection is about how you've got to be selfish and while you've been extremely loyal throughout in your career, being selfish is very important because that's how people become successful. Yep. Was it in respect to certain career choices you made? Because a lot of them could have come from the fact that those were your friends and yep. all your friends are from the film industry. Yep, absolutely. Um, I think one of the things I learned from the younger generation 
uh, younger generation, I mean like the 15 to 25 year olds, mm. is there's an immense sense of professionalism mm. and confidence in what they do. It doesn't matter who's standing in front of them. I grew up in a generation, and because maybe I'm from the film industry, mm. um, there's this whole element of respect, and there's this whole senior, element, junior, senior, yeah, all that. They, they, they're okay with that. But once the camera comes on, all bets are off. Mm. They're gonna come at you in in front of the camera right. in the scene and and give it their whole. Mm. Whereas I know in the past, out of respect, you've you know you know no no okay you want facing take facing oh you know uh, I used to do that kind of stuff mm. somewhere as an actor. Or in any profession, and I mean this in the best possible way. Mm. I, I don't mean this negatively. Be selfish. Be selfish for yourself, for your craft, for your own people. In that sense, be selfish because you you need to be a bit selfish to be able to give your best. If you are not convinced in your own head that you're not going to be able to give your best, you're not going to give your best. There in turn, you're not you're doing injustice to the venture. Mm. There's absolutely nothing wrong. I actually felt previously that if I disagreed with somebody, I, I wouldn't tell them. Mm. No, no, I, I don't want to be that, that kind of guy. I don't want to um, come across as arrogant. I don't, want to, I don't want to give people an opportunity to say, oh, you know, he's just flexing his muscles, so to speak. Mm. Or on some level, it was uncool to just disagree. Mm. That was a big problem. Oh, were you overcompensating for being a bachan? I guess so. Right. Uh, I'm sure not I'm sure, I mean, that was one of the right. reasons. I, I never wanted anybody to think that, oh, he's Mr. and Mrs. Bachchan's son, so he's saying this, so we're listening to him, because right. I never wanted that. I was very conscious of that, from my behavior to everything. Um, I don't think I'd ever compromise my parents and their dignity even today. Mm. But today, if I disagreed with something, I, I understood how to put my point across in a better way, instead of, it was, for me, it was like, okay, if they're not going to get it, I'm just... Yeah, whatever, mm -hmm. man, let's just do it. But on. sometimes, you know, and I learned this from Amir, mm. he told me that disagreement is very important on a film set because it leads to an even greater outcome. Mm. So he says, I have no problem if people disagree with me. I'm willing to discuss it with them, debate it with them, because I'm convinced that through that debate, you're going to arrive at a better answer. That everyone's happy with. Absolutely. Right. Because, you know, the point of selfishness, and here I'm going to tap into what I believe is a rather undertapped aspect of your personality. You're an extremely, you're a thinking man, um, which obviously one would not realize from Household 3, but, but one does from a lot of your in-depth interviews that I've, that I've watched. And you spent two years in sport, you pretty much devoted it to your sports company with Kabaddi, with, with football, of course. Selfishness is really intrinsic to sport. And you said, and you've spoken about how sport is the closest metaphor for life. Because all its ups and downs you can see in those 30 minutes flat or whatever is the duration for a game. Do you derive a lot from sports people? Do you have like favorite sports people, what they've said? Yeah. Yeah? Immensely. Um, I, I used, I've been a sportsman when I was in school and then in college. I still play sports and I really think sports teaches you so much about life. It prepares you for the, you know, for the world out there. If it's a team sport, it teaches you about teamwork. It teaches you about sportsman spirit. More importantly, it teaches you how to fight back as a team. It mm. teaches you how to never give up. If it's a solo sport, same thing's there. So I think there are a lot of wonderful metaphors in life that you can draw with sport as well. And there are wonderful sportsmen out there that I've, that I've idolized mm. um, and just um, been so inspired by their journey and how they've gone about achieving what they achieved. And one thing mm. which is um, that I really learned and, um, from them is in their mind, they're convinced that they're the best at what they do. 